this was about these two books, the uh, tour uh, to America. And uh, Tim Beatley here is uh, the, the main author on this Green Urbanism Down Under. And Tim will be coming here for the first week of April and we'll be doing a tour around Australia. Um, there was some interest in this book over there and whenever Tim uh, came to and joined me on this tour, uh, there was some interest in it, but uh, the main thing was on this book uh, because it, I think it speaks to our time and, uh, and Tim is a joint author on that along with Heather Boyer who's our editor and uh, we have a website, resiliencitiesbook.org, and that's got a whole lot of extra material on it. And uh, Island Press uh, have uh, found that there's been considerable interest. This, this book had more pre-orders than any other book they've had, which is uh, saying something. Um, so in three weeks, we went, we as in Jan, Sam and I, went to nine cities, we had 15 flights, 22 presentations, six TV and four radio appearances, and one inauguration. The, uh, it was funded, the trip, the internal part of the trip was funded by PB uh, Parsons Brinkerhoff through our alliance that we have with them. So they were a very important part of it and in each of the cities I did a, uh, a presentation for them uh, at a breakfast or a lunch and uh, also the federal government helped to pay because uh, I went to the G'day USA event in LA. So I'm just going to go through a couple of the things that I said in my presentation. So you've got the, the story that I was telling. I start off by talking about Perth being the home of the Black Swan because this book, The Black Swan, has, um, has been very popular in America. And uh, it's by Nassim Nicholas Talib, The Impact of the Highly Improbable. It's about unpredictability. When Vlaming sailed into the Swan River, he was the first European to see that swans could be black. Up until then, it was not perceived possible that a swan could be black. So in philosophy since that time, black swans have been the things that cause uh, us to be surprised by uh, the world as it's developing and un, uh, evolving. One of the images I show is, is of Vauban. Uh, Jan Sheridy's PhD on Vauban in Freiburg. It's a terrific green city. It's got 100% renewable. It does everything right in all of those technologies, but it's managed the car. It puts all the cars in one spot and the kids are not just free range, they are feral. <laughs> and the city is a better place because of it. So you can imagine emerging out of this crisis, this collapse, this climate change and peak oil, heavy, heavy, that we could actually be making better cities that uh, have greater freedom. So the idea of a green freedom, uh, there's a lot of talk about freedom in the US. Well. They're not free from the car. They're totally dependent on it and their communities are in fear of it. The kids can't go anywhere because of it. So it is possible to imagine cities differently. So I conclude by saying, what do we need? We need imagination. The black swans are needed. We need to welcome them. We need to adapt to it. We need post-oil strategies. Uh, every city's got a very clear, well worked out terrorism strategy and every now and then sirens go off and so on and you, what is that? You know, it's, it's enormous noise, it's just a test. See that you're alert. Um, well, if they don't have po post oil strategies, neither do we. And we need partnerships for investment in post oil demonstrations. R renewable, resilient cities and green urbanism down under, it's full of stories of demonstrations. We need lots more of them. And we need hope. It's essential that we maintain hope. And so it was a good time to be there because uh, this man certainly uh, represents hope. Um, you can see in his first week he's already <laughs> under pressure. He, he left the White House yesterday 
he and, and uh, Michelle to just go to a local school so they could sort of chill out and talk to ordinary people. <laughs> you could see the pressure on them. It's just amazing. So the expectation is there, but he, he certainly exudes this whole idea of hope. And the key messages that I hear are, first of all, civility. Now, civility is a word he uses a lot, but it, it's a, it, it really rings true as a major concept that's needed for our day. There's a theologian called Os Guinness who's written a book called The Case for Civility and Why Our Future Depends on It. It is very much the kind of book that they're using and he is using uh, as the rationale for civility. Civility means that essentially no matter who you are and what your background is, you have a role to play in our society and shouldn't be prevented from that, uh, no matter what you believe. Uh, or if you have no beliefs, uh, you are part of this community and, and should be part of the civic debate and uh, opportunities provided for that. The second thing fits that, and that is how you use the internet essentially to make deliberative processes. So he's trying to get away from the top-down governments and to try and bring some of this enormous uh, grassroots movement that he, that he got going. And when you talk to the young people and they, for the first time, have started to relate to their community and to their political system, he's now extended that massive uh, electoral process that he got moving and he's put it into a, uh, an organisation, what's it called? Something America. Um, and it's, it's going to be feeding in to the government process ideas all the time, constantly keeping government on its mettle. Today there's a number of um, cusp people on their way to Canberra to be part of uh, Janet Hart's Cup's uh, attempt at a deliberative process uh, uh, based on civility, uh, the citizens' parliament, and uh, that'll be happening over the next few days. So it's something we strongly believe in, and he's actually doing it. Uh, it's, it's, it's very hard to change, of course, but uh, it is an important part of what they represent. And the third thing is the green economy, which they talk about all the time. Um, Thomas Friedman, where's my book? There it is, Hold, Wall's got it here. Hot, flat and crowded. Now Andrew, where's Andrew? Andrew over there, before I left, he said, you've got to read this book. And he actually gave it to me uh, on an audio tape uh, so that I'd listen to it. And for the first few days I was too bombed out and I was listening to it and falling asleep. Then I suddenly realised this is really good. So I had to buy it. Um, and it is a big seller in the US and what you notice is People like Stephen Chu, the new energy secretary, John Holdren, the new science advisor, are quoting from this. So if you want to know what the green economy is, it's called Why, uh, why We Need a Green Revolution and How It Can Renew America. Uh, it's a very important book and it's got very clear these, this smart grid idea and, and the electric vehicles. It's very strong on uh, building transit, building our communities, getting away from cars. Uh, he's a New York Times journalist. He mostly has written about the Middle East in the past, but that is um, a very important book and, and it does uh, picture what this city of the future will be like to live in. It's not just talking about this is needed and that's needed. It actually describes what it's like. You wake up in the morning and it goes through your life in this new city. Very, very well written. And what about transit? I put it in brackets. You, you will notice whenever the speeches are given about infrastructure, they talk about roads and bridges. And people are getting pretty wary about this, saying, oh, all this money is going to go back into roads and bridges. Now, they do have a problem. There's a lot of infrastructure that's been built over the years that's falling apart. And uh, so fixing up roads and bridges is what um, a lot of that money is going into. Um, and what I checked was, is there any new urban road capacity projects in there? And there's a few cities trying them, uh, but virtually nothing is being funded in this stimulus to actually increase urban road capacity. I was pleased to hear that. Um, there is $9 billion for transit in there. 
and this is entirely new projects that could be funded immediately. Um, but everybody said, look, the main game is not the stimulus package, it's what happens in October. The transportation bill is being reauthorised and we're going to put a whole, an enormous effort into that. So all of the alternative groups were pushing for that to, to try and see how they can uh, basically change their cities through, through that bill.